Sanctions have been in place against Moscow since it annexed Crimea last year. And the low price of oil combined to be a one-two punch many analysts believe would be fatal to Russian President Vladimir Putin. That has not been the case, and on today's press review for Ukraine Today, we take a look at an article appearing in Newsweek titled, What Sanctions? The Russian economy is growing again. Bill Powell for Newsweek writes that the economic pressure has not been enough to rein Putin in. Not only is Putin still standing, but the Russian economy against most expectations is recovering. Its stock market is one of the best performing globally this year. The ruble, after losing nearly half its value against the dollar over the course of a year, is rebounding. The natural question to ask is, why is this happening? The goal of sanctions is to get Putin to change his behavior by punishing him economically. But so far he hasn't changed because the economy is now improving. For the second time in two decades, Russia is showing that while a sharp drop in its currency's value does bring financial pain, it also eventually produces textbook economic benefits. Since a devaluation raises import prices, it also paves the way for what economists call import substitution, a clunky way to say that consumers switch to buying less pricey products pri produced at home instead of imported goods. This new reality should be a reality check for politicians that hope sanctions and low oil prices will be enough to convince Putin to take a different tack in Ukraine. Newsweek leaves readers with a bit of a warning. The Russian economy is showing enough resilience that it appears unlikely to check Putin's behavior abroad. Public opinion surveys at home provide little evidence that the people have turned on him. For Washington and its allies, the time for wishful thinking is over. Vladimir Putin is not going anywhere. That's all from us here today. Join us again tomorrow for another press review from the Ukraine Today newsroom in Kiev.